Pale Fire is a postmodern novel, but also a novel that comes, that plays with form, that takes um, the, the work, the making of art itself as kind of distorting of reality, that refuses to take reality straightforwardly, but also something that comes from the heart of the novel tradition. Like the earliest, some of the earliest English novels, it pretends to be a work of nonfiction. The novel is kind of born pretending to be memoir, pretending to be collections of letters to each other, pretending to be diaries and journals, pretending to be various kinds of nonfiction text. Here, here, it's pretending to be a critical edition of a novel. One thing, read the whole thing. Everything, including the foreword, the commentary, the poem itself, and the index are all part of a novel. If you are skipping any part of that, you are missing something that happens in this work of art. Nabokov is a, a master of the unreliable narrator technique. Very clearly, we are not to trust everything Kinboat says. We would be absurd if we did trust everything Kinboat says. And the unreliable narrator is, um, I would say, I would actually argue that there's no such thing as a 100% reliable narrator. You should never trust a narrator. They're always, because they're characters, they're biased, they have something. The unreliable narrator technique, instead of kind of minimizing the less trustworthy aspects of a character telling us a story in a biased way, highlights their bias and their inaccuracy, invites us, ironically, to read through them, to read around them, to get a sense of what's really going on in the fictional world uh, by triangulation with this person. One of the tricks is there's no such thing as an absolutely unreliable narrator either. They have to give us some kind of information. One way to wa watching Kinboat is and how he moves forward remember sometimes kinboat is on the money and it's worth paying attention to what genuine information he gets there are things he says we shouldn't believe there are things that we believe he has misinterpreted that we think we can interpret better and there are things where we think actually he's probably this is probably a fairly he's probably fairly accurate at this moment um there are moments um there are moments where that voice seems to be like that he and Shade probably do agree. There are moments where Shade is rendered in a good deal of, um, with a good deal of direct quotation dialogue, so you get to hear Shade's voice itself. You also get to hear Shade's voice in the poem. Um, this poem is interesting as part of a novel. Is it the best poem? Would it be the best poem ever standing by itself? I wouldn't think so, but it's, it's, it's a perfectly serviceable poem. And uh, Nabokov himself says, John Shade is the greatest of invented poets, <laughs> setting the bar in a particular place. Okay, for someone creating a, a work of art inside another work of art, Shade does fairly well. It's actually worth asking ourselves why the particular formal choices, why does Shade work in iambic pentameter couplets? Who is he like? Which earlier poets is he like? Why is he doing this fairly formless verse in 1959? You should never lose attention to both of the points of view here. We get both voices, we get both perspectives, and both men are, uh, both Kinboat and Shade, have vivid and intense inner lives. I will leave questions of accuracy out. I will also point out, there. I would argue there are moments where Shade gives us pieces of real information about Shade, uh, or sorry, Kinboat gives us pieces of real information about Shade that we might consider meaningful and that Shade might actually want to edit out of his self-presentation in his work of art. There are other things where we get from the poem, no matter how much Kinboat misreads this poem, we can read it. Shade is allowed to speak for himself and we are allowed to enter into his worldview just as we are dragged willingly or not, into Kinboat's worldview. Both of them, to some degree, share their, their maker's literary style. Nabokov writes in a, a, a one, Nabokov values highly detailed, realistic, uh, novelistic description. One of the things he does in fiction is create a sensual environment in very uh, intense, precise detail, something that goes with realism. And I don't mean realism here, it's just like there 
isn't as the opposite of fantasy or the opposite of science fiction or any of that. I mean realism. Conventional realism is not realism. Realism is the attempt to get beyond literary convention by depicting what is happening more accurately than the normal artwork does, showing us including the gritty, dirty stuff, right? Um, the, 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 the banalities, the middle class langers and, and absurdities of life in this college town where shade, we get shades, detail, the details of shade, it's kind of like middle class, unimpressive personal life going over to shade's house is not being like, it's not the, it's not the fantasy of being around a poet. It's just like, you know, it's that guy who's a, who's a poet and he, you know, and he likes to read bad newspapers and, and, and drink on the sly. Nabokov um, is famous for his kind of intense lyrical, but also elaborate sentence structure. He can write beautifully. He is a master of the sentence. He is a master of literary style as a work of art. And he's going to, it's a, he has a fairly old fashioned for the 20th century love of the complex compound sentence, right? The sentence as a world in miniature sometimes. Pay attention to how those sentences are put together. You can learn a lot as a critic and, and as an aspiring fiction writer, if you are one, just from how he constructs these sentences. Also, it is important to remember that Nabokov, Nabokov will make no concessions to your vocabulary or its limits. If you don't have, if you don't know a word in this book, Nabokov holds a position, you should get a dictionary maybe expand your mind. If you think that's unfair of Nabokov, this is his third language. This is his third, English is his third language. He grew up speaking English. He grew up trilingually in a Russian-speaking, French-speaking, English-speaking household. He was speaking English very early, though Russian's the first language. But when he made the transition to writing in English as his primary language, became an English language novelist rather than a Russian language novelist, he just read the OED, all of it, the Oxford English Dictionary. And he felt, he felt, he feels, every word in there is up for grabs. Let me give you an example. If you turn um, to page 136, um, Kinboat's, line, Kinboat's note of commentary on line 130, uh, 137 of the poem, he, Kinboat glosses the word lemnicit, looks up the dictionary, doesn't understand it, and then gives us a model of reading badly. Here, Kinboat is a bad reader who dismisses lemnicit, says, it probably doesn't mean anything, it's probably just sound. Kinboat is dead wrong. It's an unusual word, but Shade has reached for it. You know, Shade will use words like vermiculated, irredual, lem lemnicent. If you don't like those words, you, Nubak would say, step up your game. Have at least as good a vocabulary as the refugee, please. Immigrants, they get the job done, including reading, apparently, the job of reading the whole damn dictionary of English. Do not gloss over it. The, it's there for a reason. It's a very particular image, actually a meaningful image in the larger symbolic connotations of the novel. Don't be like Kinboat. Every word matters.